now let's talk about a few things to help you get started with Michael Burritt's Eastern Promises. Now, throughout this piece, you're going to be using two primary strokes. That is to say, the double vertical stroke and the single independent stroke. Now, if you're still a little bit new to this, coordinating those two movements with your hands may be a little bit tricky at first. Essentially, your hands are doing two very different movements at the same time, and that can be a little bit difficult to navigate if you're still a little bit new to this. So what I suggest is starting off by practicing each individually. So give a lot of time to your double vertical strokes and practice also your single independent strokes using whatever exercises you like to use. Next, slowly start putting them together in a way to where you're going to have a little bit of success starting off immediately. So don't get too crazy with what you're doing as far as putting these things together. Start with something simple such as double vertical strokes and one single independent stroke at the same time. chance at getting comfortable with this the correct way. Now, in this piece, he uses a, a, an unusual technique of actually playing with the shaft of the mallet on the edge of the bar. There's a few other notable pieces that use this, such as Joseph Schwantner's Velocities or Lee Stevens' Rhythmic Caprice. What you want to avoid in this is hurting your back because it tends to wear on you if you're practicing this for, for a long time. So what you want to avoid is bending at the waist in order to get closer to the bars to do that. What I suggest doing is taking a step back, either with your right foot or left foot, whichever one you feel more comfortable with. For me, it's my right foot. Taking a step back and then bending your knee to where your entire body just gets a little bit lower, but you maintain the good posture and it allows you to not only get a little bit lower to the instrument, but it also kind of pulls you back so you're not having to play with the mallets right next to you, towards them. Another issue that you'll probably run into with this piece is balance. In this piece, the melody primarily is found in the left hand with the right hand playing the part of the accompaniment. Now for you right-handed players, this may be a little bit uncomfortable. I know it was for me just because my left hand doesn't really want to cooperate quite as much as my right hand does, but it's something we should all practice anyway. So for a couple of reasons, you're going to run into some balance issues. First, first and foremost is the right hand is playing in the higher register of the instrument, and that's automatically going to jump out to the audience more so than the left hand. So you're already running at a deficit there because of the fact that it's a higher register. The next thing you're going to run into to compound that is the fact that you're playing two notes with the right hand as opposed to one note lines with the left hand. So there's another problem. The third problem is the fact that it's just the same repeated rhythm over and over again, the straight eighth note. The longer that goes on, the more the audience's ear is going to be automatically drawn to it just because it's happening so much and it's the same notes. So what you're going to have to do in order for this left hand to be heard is by playing the right hand much, much softer than is indicated. If you're still having problems with getting that right hand underneath the left hand, another thing you can do is actually play closer to the strings. That's going to take some of the fullness out of the sound away, but it is going to help decrease the volume if you're still having trouble getting that left hand to stick out as a texture. So, and it also might provide for a nice color change going from a nice full sound at the louder dynamics to a nice, little bit thinner sound at the softer dynamics. Now, with the melody being in the left hand, 
have some fun with it. You don't want to make it straight eighth notes or have the dynamics be consistent throughout the entire thing. Have fun with those syncopations or the offbeat eighth notes. And then also keep an eye out for those accents. slurs rather than one note being here with the next note being here. Also maybe treat them a little bit differently so the higher up you go, we talked a little bit about following the line, which means the higher up the instrument you go, the louder you get, the, down, the further down the instrument, the lower you get. So maybe take that into account with the accents. So the higher the accents go, maybe you play them a little bit louder and as you get a little bit softer, you're going to get as you get a bit, a little bit lower in the instrument, excuse me, you're going to play a little bit softer. The point is you want to vary this throughout the piece so that it'll keep it interesting to the audience and it'll also keep it interesting to, for you since you'll probably be practicing it alone in a practice room for a little while. So you want to keep things interesting. Um, I want to say a big thank you to Michael Burt for, for writing this piece for me. Um, in addition to being one of the world's foremost percussionists and educators, he was also one of my favorite teachers over the past uh, 10 years or so. So it really, really means a lot and it's really special to me to have his music a part of this project and to have him a part of this project and helping me out. So thank you so much, Michael Burritt. And I hope all of this helps you get started with Michael Burritt's Eastern Promises. <laughs>